I first remember the Gordon Craig Theatre uh, before it was built, when Ray Gorbing um, was president of the uh, Lytton Players and of, of very much a star of the, of the organisation. And of course, he des designed and built it. Well, I think I remember the Gordon Craig, first of all, as a building in progress. Ray's Orange Box was in the process of being built when I came into Stevenage, I assume, because I've been here since 1973. There was a lot of change going on in the town at that time. And amongst those major changes was the building of the Leisure Centre with the Gordon Craig Theatre in it. When I joined the Lytton Players, it was just before the theatre opened. So I had never done any performances anywhere else apart from Music Hall the previous year because I'd only just joined. I hadn't been a member of hugely long standing. Um, a friend of mine was a member and I joined because she thought it would be a good idea to get me out of the house. It was a huge difference coming to the Gordon Craig. Previously, the Littons had either done little in-house productions or mainly performed on the old college stage, um, just off the back of the Six Hills there. And um, the Gordon Craig was so much bigger. It was all very exciting because we saw, saw it growing and um, were absolutely thrilled to bits to be the first people performing in there. We were so excited about the theatre, you know. Uh, we watched it grow and all the time anticipating that we were going to sing in that theatre. We were going to perform and we were going to perform to a larger audience than usual, you see. When we first started going in to do the shows, um, we didn't have that much time in the theatre itself. We would probably only have a dress rehearsal in there, having done all our previous rehearsing up at our own premises. Um, but we'd get in for the dress rehearsal, and that's when all the problems came out, the things that you'd been trying to do right suddenly didn't go right because people were shining great big floodlights at you and um, somebody was laying cables across the stage for some unforeseen reason. And um, we had some fairly fraught dress rehearsals, I think it's fair to say. Gosh, <laughs> it's the Gordon Craig. It was a, it was a proper theater. It had, it had an orchestra pit, it had a big backstage, scenery dock, workshops, green room. You know, it was, wasn't just like doing music hall at the college where you sort of hunched up any way you could and changed in the changing rooms for the gym or something. It was a proper, proper theatre. Very spacious. And of course, the auditorium was the envy of the whole country, I think, because Ray, having been quite tall himself, designed the building with a lot of leg room in the rows. And of course they still exist today. And that, that is one of his legacies. I think the very first show I did was pretty well the inaugural concert, where we did, if I recall, a program of Gilbert and Sullivan music. Initially, the Lytton players did the first concert in there and that was emceed by Leonard Parkin, who, if you probably remember, uh, was an ITN newscaster. When the curtain went up at that concert, there were all this sea of faces. We'd never seen a sea of faces before. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And they looked so happy, and they clapped at the beginning. I remember them clapping like anything. And ge generally speaking, in a smaller place, you know, they don't clap, they just wait. <laughs> until they see if it's worth clapping for. The opening concert, just worried about whether I'd be able to, my voice would last out because not, not having done any singing really before, um, it was all new and different. I'd never, never done anything even at school like that. So being in a real theatre, singing on a proper stage, was a bit... Uh, bit disconcerting. <laughs> it's a bit disconcerting in the Gordon Craig in that you can frequently see the first 
seven, eight, ten rows sometimes of the audience. Often in theatres you can't because you've got so much stage light coming at you that everything beyond the pros arch is all dark. But no, not here. Odd, because I couldn't work out where the voice was going. And that's always been something that I've noticed there. You, you open your mouth and you sing and you're not sure where it's gone. So um, you're not quite sure how much welly to give it. But I thought this was quite good. I could, wouldn't mind trying this again. I think we were anxious not to let the theatre down. That's a strange thing to think, isn't it? But somehow or other, the theatre was dominant because of its size, but also because of its advantages, of course. Wonderful things in the theatre that you don't get in a village hall or in, in a hut. Uh, but um, we were anxious to do it justice. I think that was the predominant thing. We were anxious to get it right for Ray, whom we were all so fond of, and for the fact that Stevenage had a theatre. But it's just the sheer luxury of having um, comfortable places to, to sit and get changed uh, instead of in corridors at the, or behind a screen somewhere with the fellas on the other side. And, um, it, was, it was just lovely. It was like sort of feeding one's uh, dreams, childish dreams, of actually being a professional. <laughs> on that night, we all say, uh, signed our names on the ceiling. Thought it was such a theatrical thing to do. Oh, it was lovely. We were so sorry, you know, there wasn't, after many years, uh, the ceiling had to be painted over and a lot more people had the pleasure of signing their names on the ceiling. But we had such fun. We had rehearsed and rehearsed and moving into the Gordon Craig was just the acme of our desires. After that concert, you know, we couldn't wait until we went for the next thing. I mean, there were lots of other shows. Um, I think the best one, probably from the Lytton Players' point of view, was My Fair Lady. We performed uh, many, many years of Gilbert and Sullivan and then um, it was decided that we would do My Fair Lady. Oh, gosh, oh, I wish I could do it now. <laughs> In My Fair Lady, we didn't actually get as far as the second act in the dress rehearsal. We only dress rehearsed the first act. So when it came on to the first performance, we'd never actually done it on the stage at that point. We used to line up in the wings and get ready. Oh, we used to say, are you all right? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh dear, we did love it so. Oh, the dear old Gordon Craig. I have to say, my fair lady, I, all of us, I don't think had ever been so fit as we were by the time we'd finished that show, because it was really, really energetic. There was a huge amount of dancing, costume changes. It was, it was mad, but it was very successful. There was Pirates of Penzance. It was the first thing I ever sang a leading part in. And I was terrified. And I stood in the wings waiting for the cue. And I stepped back because I thought, I can't do this. And came up against a whole load of immovable objects behind me, which was the gentleman's chorus, who said words to the effect of, if you don't go on, we'll throw you on. Um, and I went on and I did it and my dad was in the audience and he came round afterwards to the green room and he stood there all pink in the face and beaming and he said, I didn't know you could sing. In those days we had trapdoors all over the Gordon Craig stage. I think there were possibly 15 of them but they were rows and 
so on. And we were using those for the policeman. And the policeman disappeared down the steps into the understage and up the steps at the other side. It was a very amusing um, scene in itself. But the smallest policeman of the lot, somehow every performance managed coming up out of the understage to knock his helmet off coming up through the hole. So, of course, everything ground to a halt while he scrabbled around going back down the stairs to find his helmet. It was always something like that. There was a, a revolver, a gun, hidden behind the scenery. And one of the ladies of the chorus walked with me. We were strolling, you know, um, as though we had all the time in the world. We were strolling across the stage and uh, she peered over this piece of scenery and she said, oh, look, and picked up the gun. Put it down, I said, put it down. You mustn't see it. The audience is uh, it's hidden. The audience mustn't see it. Oh. So somebody was using the quick change room, which was one of the rooms at the back corridor behind the stage. And she was wearing probably her petticoat and bra and the fire alarm had gone off. And a fireman came loping along the corridor and he went past the changing room, she had the door open. And you saw him stop and he sort of backpedaled like something out of a cartoon film. And he went, here miss, can I rescue you? <laughs> Where we had to climb up the steps, we climbed onto a platform. Now at the end of the show, utter blackness when the lights went down, I was on the platform I was so taken aback by the lights going down, with black as black could be, I fell. I fell about six feet, I think. And there was uproar. Was I injured? Well, I wasn't injured, but my pride was hurt, I'll tell you. So I was sharing a dressing room with a woman who was singing The Fairy Queen in Iolanthe, and at the technical rehearsal, she was called down to the stage before we started. And she came back looking quite shaken. And I said, what's the matter? And she said, she held up this sort of set of straps and canvas and said, they're going to fly me on. And she didn't know anything about it until then. <laughs> so she was somewhat taken aback by that. I directed a play here once. It was part of Stevenage Festival one year. And it was one of the series of Farndale Avenue farces called Chase Me Up Farndale Avenue, see if we play, um, which I, I was pleased to be able to direct because it's the only time I've actually directed on a professional stage. Um, it was fraught with all sorts of business that could potentially have gone completely wrong, wrong, ruining the performance. We only did two nights because that was the amount of time the festival could give us. And um, they both went superbly well. And after the final curtain on the second night, I disappeared. The cast were running around trying to find me. I was in quick change room one, crying my eyes out. <laughs> And I really genuinely was, I was in floods of tears. I was just so overwhelmed with the emotion. And that's what the theatre can do for you. It can get you in here, you know. Stage manager had a beard and I can't remember his name, but he was ever so strict with us, ever so strict. Joe Cooksey, who was a stage manager at the theatre, bearded fellow, big. If we weren't in the right place at the right time, we knew all about it, you know. We really did. Very much in charge of everybody. They certainly got told off if you stepped out of line. The Gordon Craig crew, of course, had their own little, little room at the back of stage where they could brew up and eat pasties and so on. And we were confined to the green room and heaven help us if we encroached on their little territory. So see now, Mike Steele, Ray Gorbing, and John Austin singing the three brothers from Princess Ida, which when you consider that Ray Gorbing was enormous and Mike, uh, as was John Austin, and Mike in the middle as the third brother was just extremely silly. <laughs> But lot, lots of, lots of um, 
of people who were might be considered sort of mad's not the right word, but they enjoyed what they did and they did it very well. <laughs> friendship's still there and it's always oh do you remember okay and so it goes on and all the old stories come out <laughs> oh it became such a part of our lives such a part of our lives we used to race up the stairs to our dress oh I couldn't do it now <laughs> but we used to race up the stairs to our dressing rooms uh, to get makeup on you know I didn't think I was a the kind of person who would stand on a stage in front of, is it 503 people in the Gordon Craig, something like that? That was the time when the curtain went up and there were all the people, our friends, our families, strangers, but there they were and we entertained them. And we did that for many years, many years. <laughs>